Welcome to Royal Haunts and the House of York. The House of York came in battle and fell in battle. Edward IV's claim to the throne came through Edward III and his son Lionel of Antwerp. The argument could be that it came through a female line, but Lionel of Antwerp's daughter, Philippa, was officially second in line to the throne and no law had been introduced in bypassing females or their descendants from claiming the crown. It was Richard, the third Duke of York, who made his claim and Parliament and King Henry VI agreed but there was one who didn't and that was the queen margaret of anjou she and henry had been married eight years when she gave birth to a son edward of westminster and she was not prepared to let anyone take away his birthright henry was weak-willed allowing favourites to sway him and his wife to finally take control with richard coming into conflict with the king like henry's brother humphrey he along with others was charged with treason richard gathered his supporters and so began a civil war when richard died at the battle of wakefield the torch passed to his nineteen-year-old son edward of york it was a year later with henry confined that parliament proclaimed edward as the new king at the same time declaring henry the sixth the usurper and traitor however this did not sit well with the barons as they had fought to rid henry of those corrupt advisers not depose him edward didn't help his cause either when he married elizabeth woodville a commoner in a secret ceremony especially as negotiations had taken place to secure a more lucrative match as befits a king as well as forming allies richard neville the earl of warwick came in conflict with edward to the point of changing sides and along with edward's brother the duke of clarence a deal was struck with henry the sixth queen who was in exile with her son in france warwick was an ambitious man having married one daughter to the duke of clarence his second daughter Anne, to seal the deal, was betrothed to Edward of Westminster. However, Edward was becoming suspicious of Warwick and his brother, but before he could take action, they called their supporters to arms. Edward managed to escape and in a perilous journey reached Holland. Although, having been declared a usurper, Henry was set back on the throne, with Warwick taking virtual control. But Edward, having had a kingship for nine years, was not prepared to give it up, and rallying an army, he returned. And with his brother George knowing which side his bread was buttered, he turned his support back to Edward. This time, victory was complete, with the death of the Earl of Warwick at the Battle of Barnet, and Edward, the Prince of Wales, falling at the Battle of Tewkesbury. Henry the Sixth was imprisoned at the Tower of London, with no one in any doubt that his death was no more than murder. Edward was once again king reigning for a further twelve years the earl of warwick's death left his two daughters with a very lucrative inheritance edward's youngest brother richard saw his opportunity and married anne neville the widow of edward of westminster and former princess of wales this brought conflict between richard and george and with richard having more influence over the king edward finally put an end to the sibling rivalry when george was imprisoned at the tower of london charged with treason George was murdered, though some may prefer to call it a private execution, and being a renowned heavy drinker, the joke was that he drowned in a barrel of Malmsey wine. This put Richard one step closer to the crown, and with Edward consumed with a number of illnesses and suffering a stroke, he died just nineteen days short of his forty-first year. In light of what later happened, there have been conjectures as to how he came about his demise, from pneumonia to being poisoned. Knowing his end was near, Edward added codicils to his will, making Richard Lord Protector during his son's minority reign, and so the crown was set for regency, with the young King Edward V only being thirteen years old. Under the protection of his mother's family, Edward was travelling to London with his uncle, Anthony Woodville, when Richard intercepted the party. As Lord Protector, Richard was taking control and the guardianship of the king. The retinue found themselves under arrest and were later executed without trial, while young Edward was taken to the Tower of London to prepare for his coronation. Elizabeth grudgingly gave up her only other son, Richard, to keep Edward company, and the two boys were often seen playing within the grounds of the tower. Then one day they were shut away, only to be seen peering out of windows, and then they were gone. In the meantime, the coronation was put back, giving Richard time to produce evidence that Edward IV had been married prior to one Eleanor Talbot, 
By this time Eleanor had conveniently passed away, but a bishop readily came forward to state that he had conducted a marriage ceremony between the couple. This gave rise to Parliament to make the marriage between Edward and Elizabeth invalid, at the same time making their children illegitimate. Although William the Conqueror was illegitimate, no king since had the right to take the crown from such a lineage. Surprisingly, this left Richard the only natural claimant, as he condemned the two children of his brother George as the offspring of a traitor. The two boys remained shut away in the tower, supposedly for their own protection, and by the autumn of 1483, rumours were rife that they had been murdered. The ghostly figures of the two boys reputedly haunt the tower, two frightened children going hand in hand, known as the princes in the tower, though one was truly a king. Richard came to the throne, making sure that any opposition was swiftly dealt with. This was mainly Elizabeth's family, the Woodvilles, with some managing to flee the country. Even Richard's key supporter, Henry Stafford, the Duke of Buckingham, turned against him, possibly seeking the crown for himself. But without the aid of the Tudors, all was lost and the rebellion swiftly put down. When Richard became king, he and Anne already had a seven-year-old son, Edward of Middleham, who was invested as Prince of Wales, but a year later tragedy struck when the boy died, leaving a gap in the succession. Although Richard had bypassed his brother's children in taking the throne, he named Edward Plantagenet, his nephew, as successor, but this was possibly to please his wife as the boy was also the child of Anne's sister. However, when Anne died a year later, Richard named another nephew few, but that all changed when Henry Tudor finally landed in England, with bad weather forcing him to turn back to Normandy during Buckingham's rebellion. Henry Tudor finally landed with 5,000 men, but even with the support of those in Wales, Richard's army was far larger and more seasoned in battle. The armies met at Bosworth Field, just outside Leicester, but fate was not on the king's side that August day. Richard was killed and Henry Tudor, with a tentative claim to the crown, was proclaimed king. It also made a prophecy come true. As a crowd watched Richard set out for the battlefield, his spur struck a stone on the bridge crossing the river Saw. A wise woman prophesied that his head would strike the same stone on his return. After the battle, Richard's body was thrown over a horse, and crossing back over the bridge, his head was said to strike that same stone. He was buried at Leicester Cathedral, but later his grave was destroyed during the dissolution, and his remains thrown into the river, leaving only the monument that stands to him today. Richard is now said to haunt the battlefield where he died, along with a few other lingering spirits. It wasn't until later that Richard was turned into a monster, and even depicted as a deformed hunchback, but the Tudors, especially Henry VII, was very adept at rewriting history.